Well, welcome everybody. First community call of 2024. Uh, we have a couple of fun updates for you today. So I'm going to go through the usual flow, do an overview, give you some product updates from Mateo. Ads has a marketing section for us today, give us some updates of some of the big things coming up and uh, end of year announcements. And then I'm going to go through a quick overview of creds, which is the new governance system that we're looking to roll out later this month. And of course, there will be an open office at the end for everybody. So I want to start with shout outs. Um, big shout out to Olshansky, who was on the Node Runners call or the ecosystem call yesterday and gave us an update on the state of the protocol. Uh, really, Some really good stuff around the actual timing of when things are going to launch. So if you're curious about um, what to expect and when to expect Shannon, uh, and then importantly, what features are going to ship with Shannon and what things are coming after. It's a really informative call. Uh, it's about 20 minutes long, and you can see it right on the front page of the YouTube. Uh, it's also been posted around a couple other places. But uh, thank you to Olshansky for, for making that update so that way we can get it out there and people can stay informed. And as per usual, if anybody else has any other shout outs, now's a great time to do it. I'm going to do another one. Ian, I wanted to say thank you for uh, stepping in and presenting in our sockets call along with Patrick Skinner. Um, so we moved our, we moved the builders call to include um, anybody who's getting paid via a pop or a socket as well. Really looking to promote that cross collaboration. So that way everybody knows what is being worked on uh, and where they can step in and help. You know, the whole point of sockets is to support some of the major protocol decisions. And so giving people more visibility into that is, in my opinion, really helpful. So shout out to Patrick and Ian, who both gave um, updates on their sockets last week. And uh, shout out to Dan and Peter from CoUnity, who are going to do an update next week on some of their initiatives. So big thank you to you all. And then open floor here, if anybody else has a shout out for anybody who's doing work, might not be publicly uh, very obvious or recognizable, but if you have somebody you want to do a thank you to, now's your chance. Well, while I have you, I will um, also do a quick shout out to Andros from Wonderverse here, uh, who's also been working on the back end. So some of the creds changes we've made, um, we're going with a different platform and Andros has jumped in and made uh, major changes for us and made it super helpful. So thank you, Andros, uh, for jumping in. Cool. I'm going to keep moving on then. Let's jump into these announcements. So it's been actually it's been about a month since our last community call because of the holidays. Uh, so a couple of DAO proposals that were up for vote have gone through. Um, the one PEP65 for um, Pocket Scan was approved. And then um, community moderators as core contributors, which is Jerry and Bruce, they've also been approved to be paid from the DAO. So really appreciate all the work that you both have done and continue to do uh, as tickets are coming in frequently. And uh, these guys have been on top of it, answering community questions and uh, helping everybody. So. I'm going to give you all a, a big shout out here. Thank you. Uh, so some updates on the forums. Uh, again, if you don't check the forums daily, uh, usually Pocket News does a nice update of what's going on. So you can just see what they're posting on Twitter or X. Um, the Gateway Demo, we've awarded it to Liquify and Raid Guild. Uh, if you want more info on that decision, it's in the forum. Uh, I recommend you read through that. But we had a bunch of really great submissions, so thank you to everybody who did submit. Uh, on the forum, just some more updates. You know, there was a conversation around Masari uh, last week or maybe the week before, and there's been some great discussion in there. Um, there was an idea around Pocket Labs. So, uh, what would it mean to have a kind of moonshot initiative within? Um, within the Pocket DAO or Pocket community. There's been some good discussion in there. Um, happy to weigh in on that as well. But it's brought up some some core needs that I think the community and everybody else is feeling. So uh, at PNF, we're looking to, to make an update on that and address some of those very soon. Uh, there was an update from Jack around PGov7, so the voting specification for the new governance. Um, and Dermot made a Wrap Pocket V2 update, which... Um, I think the TLDR is that uh, there are now 90 days of additional rewards going until April 9th. Um, so if you're not if you're not staking your wrap pocket on Uniswap, uh, there are still DAO rewards going there. So if you're looking to be incentivized, you can jump over to that forum post and see how to do that there. 
All right. And then the last thing is, um, made a post towards the end of last year on sockets themselves. You know, we were really looking for more community engagement, and especially as the token price recovers, we can be a little bit more lenient on uh, where we can do our spending, like how how we can take these experimental initiatives. So, um, made a post around the mechanism and how we want to update that. And we have a whole bunch of ones that were opened in the last uh, three-ish weeks or so. Um, and you can see those here. I'm going to do a little bit more uh, sorting with this to just kind of show like where the funding is going and what kind of initiatives people are interested in. Uh, and again, sockets, uh, sockets are a great opportunity for people who are new to the ecosystem to come in and do work and show that they're driving impact. And we are in this phase probably this month and probably next month of really dialing in how the sockets work and how we measure that impact. So if you want to be a part of that, um, or if you think you can add value to the ecosystem in some ways, I do encourage you to open a socket. And you can find more info about that in the forum, or you can feel free to DM me as always. All right. Let's see, Mateo, I see your, your bubble over here. You want to give us some market or some product updates? Yeah, yeah, sure. So to kind of like pick up maybe where Olshansky left off, maybe like just a slightly bit lower altitude. Um, just uh, want to talk a little bit about the iteration that's ongoing right now. Um, and then, uh, but before we do that, let's, uh, I think we mentioned this last time, but like Coder's leading the charge on testing of our last Morse upgrade, which will be v0.11.0, and that is on testnet. Uh, there's been a bunch of uh, activity even today getting that up and going, so there. Um, and uh, we'll let it marinate for a while, uh, and then they'll green light that for mainnet deployment. And then again, uh, that'll be the last Morse mainnet upgrade, uh, and then we'll like all head over to Shannon after that. Um, Shannon development, so we're in iteration eight right now. And remember, everybody, this is all happening out in the open on GitHub. So anyone can go and jump into the product roadmap there, see the active iteration, see what's coming next, see tickets getting closed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this particular iteration um, had some goals across uh, different uh, domains. So on the infrastructure side, a uh, team been working on more observability and some load testing on the SDK app game. Um, staking and, and actually doing a little bit of a documentation around that this this uh, this iteration protocol itself team's been refactoring claim proof uh, working on session rollover um, adding more documentation and and driving towards uh, better end-to-end -end testing and then on the ecosystem side I think we mentioned that we were doing like um, uh, we were taking a look at a bunch of auditors to help us with not only SMT, we've kind of like expanded scope. We know we're going to need more audits and, and now we're kind of more interested in uh, sort of a security audit partner engagement that would go beyond SMT. Uh, so we actually um, put out a call for a second wave of auditors. So we had like um, we had about four or five in the first wave and we got like sec six more proposals in the second team has been reviewing those over the last 48 hours, uh, and we're going to make a, a decision end of day tomorrow, and we'll be able to communicate that out. Um, and then we called this out in the builder call, but I'll call it out one more time. There's two issues in GitHub, uh, issue 27 and issue 2. Eight, one. Um, 27s related to Cosmos Ecosystem Block Explorers. If anyone in the community has any feedback, uh, recommendations, things we should take a look at, please just drop it in a comment on that issue and we'll go take a look. We're, we're sort of curious um, what's out there and you can see the notes. There's there's already been some activity there, but um, if we missed anything, please let us know. Uh, and on the Celestia uh, side, um, we've been talking to them about engaging and in, in running archival nodes. Um, they have a pretty heavyweight um, full node, full data node. Uh, so the team is thinking about that as a, as a chain list thing. And before we go that far, we just wanted to get some community feedback. If there's anyone out there that's curious about running that thing, um, also raise your hand by tagging that issue and just being like, hey, yeah, I would do that. 
uh, and then we'll circle back uh, when the time is right. But um, yeah, just curious if anyone and and then if you have been if you have attempted, I think Ian, I think you said last week you actually um, stood up and knowed yourself. So uh, any feedback on how difficult that may be, any gotchas uh, that that issue would be the place to like share that with the rest of the team on on trying to get that going, uh, so that we can bootstrap it. Cool. Um, that's all I got for now. Thanks, Mateo. Um, if anybody has the link to those two GitHub issues, feel free to drop them in, in chat. I'm going to do that uh, while I have this talk otherwise. Um, and just a reminder for everybody, we do have alternating builders calls on Thursdays with the community call. So every Thursday, there's a call going on. And so if you want to learn more about the protocol, um, join us next Thursday. It's a much deeper dive than you're getting here. Um, going through some of the the issues that are appearing and, and really trying to get, again, people who are developing, um, having conversations around what their problems are. So thanks, Mateo. Really appreciate it. All right. So jumping over to ads. Hey, guys. Um, it feels like a while since I gave anybody a, an update on what we've been doing on marketing. Um, I thought I would start by talking through the, the kind of full overview of the different audiences we're talking to. Um, that will give you an understanding of what we're going to be doing over the next three to six months, at least, if not year. Um, and then I wanted to share some highlights of an event we've just announced for East Denver, um, as well as some different ways that you can get involved if you want to support. Um, if we hit through to the next one. Um, so apologies for the ugly chart. <laughs> the goal of this is to pull everything really into one page so that we can make sure that as we go out and build a brand, um, you know, everything we do needs to be consistent across each of the audiences while they have very different needs. You can dial things up and you can dial things down, but unless you have a level of consistency, you won't have a brand because nobody will know what you stand for because they'll have come across you in a different personality and a different outfit every time they they run into you so we have three audiences the first you've heard me talk about a lot which is who's a devs and it's really about trying to drive awareness and consideration with them and the pitch is is increasingly clear so it's about whether you connect directly or through your rpc provider you can underpin your app with rpc at the lowest cost highest uptime and ultimate scalability um, and we have data to back each of those up um, the key channels by which we communicate this to them is through kind of some of the core developer experience elements of our docs and our website, through the partnerships that we form with people like DeveloperDAO and Encode, through the side events that we host, and then also through our Twitter content. Um, in terms of what we're going to do in Q1 to kind of further that goal, uh, we need to continue improving our docs and our website. Uh, we have an East Denver event that we are executing next month and um, that will be in collaboration with other deep in projects as well as through the big developer communities and um, so that we can really just move forward with that goal of kind of owning that deep in narrative um, and raising awareness with devs we also have the testnet launch um, apologies they're going to be looking at some content with celestia just to make people aware of that um, as well as a potential retro pgf campaign that we're planning to kick off which should uh, boost our visibility more broadly. And then in terms of our audience too, it's about trying to attract new gateways. These may be existing RPC businesses or RPC adjacent businesses or communities or businesses or entities that have really good distribution um, and we think can rapidly ramp up. The goal there really is on, on hitting our North Star revenue uh, objectives, our protocol revenue objectives. And therefore, it's very much focused on conversion. Um, and the pitch to them is to build on Pocket Network to serve RPCs from more chains um, at potentially lower cost with better scalability around peaks of demand and, and ultimately with some failover. Um, and that, you know, we'll do that through mostly a B2B model. So we'll, we're doing a lot of outreach. Everything supported by performance metrics. There'll be some content on Twitter and there'll be content on the website. But it's much more of a kind of, you know, a one-to-one -one kind of a model. Um, so we will amplify gateway performance. We will amplify gateway wins. Uh, we will support all of that with targeted outreach um, 
and and kind of supporting collateral. And then the third audience is one I haven't really talked about before. Um, it's one that it became very apparent, I guess, you know, it's end of Q3. Um, and we really started trying to dial it up through the end of the year and ramp that up, make sure we understood it. And this is much more around that kind of general audience, um, you know, kind of, of of retail investors, of people who believe in our project, um, trying to build belief, build excitement. So, you know, marketing language, consideration and conversion. Um, and the pitch to them is that we are the deep in OG. We have a path to potentially exponential growth. We have non-Web3 potential use cases in that mix. And we have sorted out our tokenomics, including having deflationary targets. Uh, we will reach the, this audience through a combination of paid and earned media, with specific narrative content um, on, on Twitter, and then also working with opinion leaders and, and having people within the community repurpose that content um, and, and really dial it up for that audience in ways that might be harder for me to do. Um, so we're going to, in Q1, you'll see, um, we listed obviously on BitGet yes, yeah, today. <laughs> um, there's a listing campaign that's going on around that that will include a mix of paid media, Telegram community work. Um, we're also going to be doing some OG talks with Rocktree. They have a really good reach in Asia, particularly amongst um, the investor community. We are looking at how we kind of sustain that and making sure that we have a way to kind of keep the momentum on that. Um, we are focusing on one app you'll have seen, the narrative content on Twitter, um, trying to share more of those visionary stories as well as the, the kind of more down-to-earth dev stories. Um, and we've been increasingly working with some of the, the people in our community that have good reach and that can help amplify our content with their own audiences. Um, so that's kind of, at a glance, three very different audiences um, with different objectives. Um, with different nuances on that ultimate pitch of with we're a base layer that people can build upon that is super robust, that where decentralization unlocks lower costs, better scalability, and really resilient uptime. Um, so it's kind of repurposed and repackaged for each of those. Ultimately, the messaging should be consistent across all of them, slightly different channels for each of them. There is a lot to do. So you know, this is this is a, a huge amount of work, um, which is why when we come to the how can you support, if people have interest in getting involved, there's going to be lots of ways to do so. So if that's you, don't hesitate to reach out and say hi. Um, Shane, I see you come off mute. Did you want to ask something? Oh, <laughs> no, accidental on mute. Um, but yeah, so just a an open invitation to reach out to me anytime. I will make sure that this is visible uh, so you can come back to it. Do you want to go to the next one? So this is just a, a highlight of the event we just announced. I've just shared the link uh, to the Twitter announcements. Please give it some love. Um, this fits into bucket number one, um, where we are going to be working with some leading deep in. We've got Three already fully confirmed. We've got another two that have said that they want to come in. And then there's another three that should be responding to me over the next day or so. And um, the goal is to create a space where people can connect with each other, but also play around, learn about our projects. We're going to be bringing a lot of kind of fun and game into it, where we're going to have little quests that are not re rewards, some of which will be very obviously product oriented, others less obviously product oriented, um, trying to really cut through the noise around East Denver to carve out a bit of awareness for us um, and and specifically within that developer audience and do that while associating ourselves with Deepin. We're going to be hosting side chats within that where we can kind of hopefully start to carve out some really interesting topics and some nice kind of hopefully high profile names. We can live stream some of that content. We can repurpose it in the future. Um, and we can also strengthen our ties with other decentralized infra projects um, so that, you know, we have those relationships and can do more stuff together. Um, who's going to be at, yo, oh, who's going to be at East Denver? Yeah. Some emojis, are you going to be at East Denver? 
Two, three. Oh. Well, anybody who's going to be there, you obviously have open invite. Um, the link to the event is in the Twitter post. Um, if for whatever reason you can't find it, just DM me and we'll get you in. And um, yeah, it'd be awesome to meet you. Um, on to the next one, which is ask not what Pocket can do for you, but what you can do for Pocket. Um, we have some new sockets. So we've, as you've seen probably previously, we've reintroduced the Korean and the Chinese hubs. Um, that, I guess, I, I put it on here because I think it's worth just kind of sharing with you some of the, the logic behind that. Um, when we were working with the hubs previously, I think we were trying to do a lot of different things. And now we have a very clear remit that is very strongly aligned to what we know that that Bruce and his team and Jaden and his team do really, really well. Um, we are reactivating the Telegram communities, making sure that we can translate content for the local audiences there. We are going to, you know, they're going to be there and responding to people who have questions so that as as more people become aware of Pocket, um, particularly in light of things like the BitGet listing, um, we can help have ways for them to continue that journey to find out more. Um, I'm really excited about that. I'm really glad to be able to kind of come back to this initiative um, and leverage the community as we as we you know, continue to, to grow and scale and hopefully accelerate. Um, we're also actively trying to up our game in terms of animation. So you, you may have seen on the BitGet announcement that there's a nice little animation that now goes with our exchange listing. Um, I think the the downside of our new visual identity is that yeah, you know, it can feel a bit flat and it doesn't grab people's attention on the scroll as much. One of the ways to um, leverage what we think is cool about the identity while stopping the scroll is to bring in movement. Um, it also feels like it's very, very much in keeping with that kind of tier one project look and feel and that kind of, you know, positive impression. Um, so the, the, the guys that did that are kind of working with us out of PNF's budget um we'll test them and we'll see how they do and see if we can pull them into our community if there are other people out there that want to have a go um please feel free to reach out to me um in terms of bounties we're going to be relaunching a bounties campaign so zach is going to be driving this um but there are a couple of marketing bounties within that um we really want to ask everybody in the community that understands our project which is pretty much all of you help us identify gaps in our docs. We know that there are tons of them. Identify what they are and either put your hand up to fill them or at least just identify them and somebody else can, can try to fill them. Um, and we'll create bounties for that. Um, there are a ton of things that we could explain, whether that's kind of directly, you know, creating nice video content around how to set up a node or enriching that tutorial or creating a video around, you know, how to set up your endpoint with Grove or Nodes um, or more kind of product agnostic stuff where we're just interwoven into it, um, where, you know, Pocket is just the RPC that is used in something. Um, you know, there will be a bounty for creating that kind of content because we can use that in social, we can use that in our docs. And again, it just really kind of lifts the project. So, you know, if if you have any bandwidth and and you are able to work with us on this, um, please reach out uh, to either me or to Zach or to Patrick. Um, we would love to to use use your experience and your knowledge to to help drive this piece of our mix forward. Um, you know, you have a unique perspective and unique experience and then um, we're going to be launching some comps uh, some competitions around the East Denver event just to kind of really try to engage people in the run-up to it um, one of the first ones that we're going to launch is around you know what web three character should be recreated as a lego minifigure um, so as an example you actually have a lego for man and bear outfit <laughs> so i'd love to see vitalik in a buffer corn suit um, but um that there will be more of those when you see them please engage with them however silly the idea is like just throw them out there it's it's all fun 
and it's all in the spirit of, of play. Um, so that is it for me. Um, if you have any questions, just give me a shout and I'd be happy to help. Hi, my name is Dawn. I do have some questions. <laughs> Sorry, Dawn, you, you almost got jammed up by, um, by the applause, canned applause. Yeah, I'm just um, connecting back with Pocket. Um, I did join this Dev um, Discord a couple of years ago. Um, I was in a Telegram with someone that just pretty much disappeared. So I um, haven't been in the space for a couple of years. And you all were over my head as far as the development is concerned. So um, are you all creating a, a Telegram group? Or are you all just, everyone is just here in the Discord? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are, we're trying to focus on the Discord because it's easier for everything to be done transparently in the open. Um, we also do have the forum, which is an important platform, particularly around ideas and, and more of things, more of big initiatives. Um, there is a Telegram that's maintained by the community. So there's the Poptopus Den is probably the biggest of our Telegram platforms um, that is owned and operated by Jinx. Um, we also have other channels for kind of specific interests. In fact, Jinx has just dropped the link for you. Um, so it's not an official one um, because we don't have one. Uh, officially, we're focusing on Discord. I'll just stay here in the Discord. <laughs> um, Welcome back. You just, thank you. Can you just tell me how I can purchase um pocket i'm just trying to get linked back in what platform is pocket on uh, so as of today we are now on bitget um we're also on gate io and kucoin and if you go to our docs which you can find linked in our website you will see all of the information there at the bottom of the menu get and for the get and use popped and wrap popped i think is the title and what is the website in fact, if you just go straight to docs.pocket.network. Docs.pocket.network. Okay. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks, Ads, and, and thanks, Don. Don, if you do have any questions, we have a help channel in the Discord, too. You can open a ticket, and uh, one of us will get back to you. Or you can just uh, leave your notes in the community chat, and we're happy to help, too. Um, ads, thank right. you so much for the the big marketing update. Super excited for ETH Denver. Um, just want to emphasize again that if anybody's going to be there, we'd love to see you. And uh, adds you, you're bringing up bounties. So just so everybody's aware, we are going to reopen the bounties program. Uh, and thank you for the little bit of a fire here, adds to make it happen. But if anybody has any experience with uh, bounty platforms, we're considering a couple like Dwork. Um, drop them over here so that way I can I can review them. Basically, what we're looking for is what's a lightweight way to open the bounties and get people paid with, again, light review from the PNF team or whoever's opened the bounty to make sure that they meet the qualifications. We're finding that there's a lot of, as, as you might know, in, in Web3, um, admin becomes very cumbersome, especially with multi-sigs and other wallets. So anything we can do to make that uh, easier for your end and our end would be really helpful. So if anybody has bounty thoughts, throw them my way. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> Super helpful. Um, cool. So with that, I'm going to jump through to um, our final piece here, which is which is creds. So we've been talking about a upgrade to the governance system for a while. Uh, some of you may already be uh, be able to vote in snapshot, but uh, since I've been here, it's been a very small group. I think there's uh, probably only 20ish people that actively vote, and uh, getting through the system can can be a little bit cumbersome for um, anybody who's not extremely technical. So the idea is, can we can we make the governance of the DAO more approachable for everybody? And on top of that, can we make sure that um, people have different abilities to vote based on their expertise? So um, for example, if you're new to the ecosystem and you don't know anything about running a node or building on our tech, um, should your vote count as much as somebody who's building the protocol and who's built five applications? So taking those types of things into account, uh, we've made a system that is supposed to be easier to get involved in, 
uh, and then ramp up as your contributions to the community and ability to show impact grow. So with that, um, we've got some updates around creds. Um, the big one is that we are trying to launch later this month. Um, realistically, it might be early in February, but um, we're looking for people to join us and give us feedback um, and, and kind of play test some of these early ones. So a little update. Right now, meta governance spec is due this week. Um, Jack, I see you on the call. Feel free if you have an update to interrupt me and, and give us an update, but I think that'll get done either later this week or early next week. And that would be the last spec before our complete proposal has been presented. So at that point, everybody can go through, review, leave notes, and uh, comments, questions. Uh, on more technical stuff, so we are actually doing user testing and onboarding right now to Gitcoin Passport. Um, that's your proof of personhood. So every single voter is going to need to do that. If you do not have a Gitcoin Passport, now is a really great time to uh, open up a passport and um, help us calibrate the numbers. So uh, the TLDR on that is you go through and you log into a couple of wallets and other places to prove that you're a person, and then you get a, a score. Um, and we're trying to dial in that number. Um, Currently, it's set at 20, but most people are coming in lower than that. So any feedback you have would be helpful. And I will drop a, um, a link in the chat here to where you can go if you do want to participate. Or again, please DM me if you want to be involved, and I'll add you to the groups as we go through that. Harry's only 17%. See? That's the line. 17 is our number. Um, and then the proof of concept uh, implementation. So that's the is it all working phase. We are basically at the end of that. We've got two small blockers that we think will get resolved this week. Um, and one of them is around integrating the pocket wallet. So um, that's kind of the final piece before we can do the whole process here. Um, I called out earlier a little bit that Wonderverse is, um, we're using Wonderverse as the onboarding quest. Uh, a little shout out to Andros earlier, but I just wanted to do a big thank you to them. They're going to be our integration to make our ability to go through the quests um, happen right here in Discord and be a lot more lightweight and uh, not forcing people to jump all over the place to to get their credit. So, um, Andrews, I don't know if you want to unmute and say anything. I just want to give you a shout out and say thank you for jumping in and making this happen in the last week. No, thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure working with the team. And actually, we uh, pretty much just finished the Gitcoin Passport verification. Um, it is a little bit hard to find how to actually create a passport. So we also try to make it as easy as possible to actually like find the resources to create a passport. Um, and then, you know, um, just worked with the gateway team. So shout out to them as well to issue the PDAs. Um, so, you know, we'll be going through testing like today and tomorrow. So we'll be ready, um, hopefully like next week to start testing with specific community members. Huge. Yeah, thank you. And so, um, yeah, today, or sorry, this week, we're just trying to get people through the, the Gitcoin onboarding. And then next week, we'll do the actual quest to get some feedback on that. Um, and then uh, the first quest will be a little bit of onboarding DNA and DAO stuff. So at that point, you would have citizenship cred, which would mean that you can vote in the DAO. And I'm really excited to see if our numbers go way up now that more people have access to our governance system. Uh, okay, so what's next? Yeah, so user testing and onboarding for the citizenship and then the builder credentials, they're a little more complicated, um, but those are next in line. And then we want to obviously submit the full proposal to the DAO and prepare everybody for a vote. So expect more announcements around that. Jack, do you have anything you want to jump in and say or term it? I see no one muting, so that's a no to me. Cool. Uh, that is our creds. And we're coming to the end of the, the hour here, well, the end of the meeting. Um, and I do have one last thing that I want to do, and y'all are going to have to bear with me a little bit. So we haven't done a pocket DNA NPS score in about six months. And I wanted to do a little check-in as we start the year here. Um, I have used Menti exactly zero times in a public setting. So um, if, <laughs> if y'all can join Menti, I'd love to just go through it. It'll take less than two minutes assuming I'm not technically terrible at this. So if you guys can open up a web browser here, join us on Menti or scan that on your phone. It's super easy to use on your end. I don't know how to drop the link. It's, this is embarrassing part number two.
let's see here. Are you all able to see the how we're doing? Yeah, and let me drop the link in the, the chat as well. The code is one three three four three six four four. That's the one that you'll paste in at menti.com um, if you're not scanning the QR code here. I feel like I need like Jeopardy music or something here, but um, I think this is running. If anybody can unmute and tell me if they're getting this part where they can rate. And again, this is fully anonymous, so nobody's going to see this, but but you. We're just going to get the back end of it. I'm in. Works for me. Great. Love it. Go ahead and rate us um, how we're doing with our DNA. And again, this is, you know, obviously it's very uh, subjective, but we're looking for the bias here. If you think we're doing good, bad, or otherwise, please leave us, uh, leave us an accurate review. Look at that. We're getting some updates. Woo! Okay, so while people are doing this, this is an open floor. Does anybody else have any other questions, concerns, thoughts? Um, Harry, I saw some notes about dev bounties going. Um, and I guess maybe a, a thing I can touch on here as well is, you know, we're opening the bounties. Part of that labs idea was that I think people want to be able to open pops around community initiatives that um, seem to be important. So uh, working with you all, if if other people have bounties that they think are important um, and want to be funded by the DAO, like this is your DAO, uh, let us know. And PNF will help steward getting those bounties done. Uh, we'll also help with any type of large pops. So if there are big technical DeFi um, things that you want to consider, let's let's open up a forum post and figure out how we can uh, make that happen as well. Yeah, just to jump in on that, to be fair, like obviously I got started through doing developer bounties and um, it's something that I've been pushing for on the team to get started again. So I dropped the link to Rad2. Rad2, uh, Rad, the first Rad's got a very special place in my heart. Um, big shout out to Ben for like leading that. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see after, I think after we launch the first test net, we'll be able to start um, like making like community tickets, which is what I would call bounties. Um, like, like, uh, tick, like issues on the GitHub that we uh, assign specifically for the community to take care of. Um, and those would be put through Dwork and, or, or, or whatever system you choose. Uh, but Dwork's what we did last time. Um, cause Bounty is not new for Pocked. We've done them before. But now that we have WPocked, it means we can pay straight away through Dwork. The payment system last time was really, it was a pain in the ass to be honest, but um, now we have WPOC, it'll be a lot easier because you can just pay straight straight through the uh, DWORK system. Uh, but yeah, long story short, I'd love to see developers uh, coming up like I've come up through the bounties. I'd love to see more people come up through bounties and uh, strap their stuff on the pr protocol. Thanks, Harry. Yeah, I, I can't uh, emphasize that enough that like the whole user journey here is is you're jump, coming into our community and doing work either via a bounty or a socket. So that way you can prove that you're um, interested, you can make impact in the community, and then moving through to work on like larger, bigger projects or maybe even starting your own company. Like the idea here is we want people who are new to have opportunities to contribute and get rewarded for it. And, and rewards in this case are money. Uh, which most people enjoy, and then having them um, prove that they're yeah prove that they're doing great work with the community and find other avenues for success here. So um, if we can get more Harrys in the in the ecosystem, I would be super excited to support that in any way that people need. So again, this is your DAO. Let us know how we can uh, help you use it uh, for you to be successful. Okay, uh, anybody else? Any other thoughts? Otherwise, I'm just going to play some soundboard stuff and wrap it up here. Soundboard it is. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. Um, ads, thank you for presenting. Really appreciate that. Um, 
everybody else who joined us. I really appreciate you being here, Mateo. Thanks for the updates. And uh, again, next week we have our builders call on Thursday. Please check the Discord events for that. And the following week we'll have another community call. And we will see you all. Oh, and shout out to Jinx, who always does Wednesday ecosystem calls. Um, please join those as well. Appreciate you running those all through the year, even the holidays. And that's it, everybody.